Welcome to part 39 of Final Fantasy VIII. We may have to meet up with the mayor, but first, we run into a random encounter. And did I say may? I mean we should meet up with the mayor, but first, random encounter. This is Sam, 08G. It is weak to lightning and can be easily poisoned. Though it really doesn't matter because all I have to do is just get a uh, Tetsukonal and that's the end of that. But uh, I'm getting the GF Leviathan because I have not shown off Leviathan. And speaking of Leviathan, he has some pretty interesting uh, abilities if you happen to get the ability points for them. First and foremost, he has a support mag which will allow you to refine support magic. Secondly, he has recovery. Third of all, he also can refine uh, GF returns. So, if you get that skill up, you'll be fantastic. But not only that, you can actually do a GF boost. So, if you see a uh, the animation of a GF, it'll actually boost their strength. And by GF, I am referring to Leviathan. And not only that, but Twistus has a free Spirit Junction, which of course that is your magic defense, and a uh, magic junction that she could actually get, not to mention an Elemental J. And an elemental, no, elemental attack J and an elemental defense J. Which she could certainly use. And speaking of things we could certainly use, Sam 08G has the rare chance of dropping a Dragon Fang. Sadly, this is the only one we'll run into. Good news is, we at least have one Dragon Fang to our name. Again, lightning takes this thing out real quickly. And we only get four experience points from this. And of course, Squall went up to level 34. Well, that certainly is a level gap if I haven't seen one. Nonetheless, all we have to do is follow the train tracks all the way to the end of the city. By the way, there's an inn right to the left, and to the right is the weapon shop. We will be going there by the end of this part. Specifically, to get a new weapon for Zell. That's going to happen in this part. Anyway, here's the mayor. Now, this also affects your seed ranking. If you let the Galbadian soldiers continue to torture the mayor, you will lose seed ranking. So apparently, you're gonna have to save this asshole on the first try. Cause you can lose seed ranking by saying, let's see how this plays out. Now, we see this gut body and soldier doing exactly like I told you in part, 37, I mean, sorry, 38, and that is to pretty much kill the guy because, after all, he knows he's not going to put up a resistance, so let's go and help. Of course, we have a mission to apologize to the mayor. How can we apologize to him if he's dead? We'll probably have to apologize to his wife later if that happens. But anyway, Squall is pretty much apologizing to the man that he's going to have to use violence to stop these Galbadian soldiers. And these Galbadian soldiers are just like the guys in the Galbadian prison. Save for the fact that they're be between the level of 29 and 30. So yeah, they should be nothing. One GF or a few well-timed attacks and you can break these guys down no problem. 
sorry, excuse me. It's just the fact that every time I see these guys as bosses, I start to get a little tired because they're random moves. Nothing necessarily good is gonna happen from this battle. Save for the fact that these guys actually have a chance of dropping a cottage, which is a rare drop. Yes, a rare drop is a cottage. I'll take the dragon things over the cottage any day. So whatever the case, almost forgot to mention one other thing about uh, Leviathan. It also has uh, spirit boots, which if you unlock that ability, every time the character who happens to be Junction with Leviathan gets stronger, the spirit Spirit gets up too. And oh look! Remember this enemy? We fought this thing in part 33. Now we get to fight it again. Same rules apply. It does hit harder, but the difference is there is no time limit. Lightning is its weakness. So this time, you'll probably kick its ass for good. Wow. I wouldn't say that this is Galbadia's latest weapon, because after all, this thing's not gonna last a couple of turns, and if it does, that's only because I'm stalling and trying to draw support magic, which, if I actually power up Leviathan, I will no longer need to do that either. I could just simply buy one item, and pretty much increase the support magic or for the most part get a lot of wizard stones and increase the support magic to its highest state anyway one summon of Ketsukado and that should do some serious damage I mean we've already did like 4,000 of this thing and it is, I do believe, 7,000. And if your health is low, try to bring it up a little. And while you're at it, cast protect on yourself at all times. Because even though this thing doesn't, not, well, we'll be able to pull off uh, the laser beam or the energy blast, or whatever move it was that was heavy damage. Because by the time we do actually get to that point, he'd already be dead. But be warned, this thing still has the physical strength to actually bypass your defense. So be careful. And with that, nice little transition there. You see this thing getting crumpled to pieces. Ha! Take that! I'm gonna protect! Oh, but be warned also, this enemy that just showed up from part 33 also has priority, so it can attack twice before going to the next character. So you might want to be careful on that. That's pretty much what happens with no weight, but at the same time, even if there was weight, he'd still have to attack because for some reason, he has the higher speed. It didn't even cast double on itself. That's even worse. So, whatever the case, ladies and gents, that one last Hellfire pretty much solidified it's fate. Well, it would have. If it's still alive. Well, if it wasn't still alive, sorry. <clears throat> but, one more uh, attack from Ketsukado will finally put an end to it. And that will be the last time we see this contraption once and for all. So we'll just use Quistus to heal, and we'll be fine. And with that said, 
That is the end of the BGH 124F2. Or should I say the beat up machine? So, now that we've got that done and finished dealing with a boss, we've got Running Fire, which now Quistus can learn Gatling Gun. You know, the very move that uh, the boss was using on us, and not to mention, Sam08G was using on us too. So Quistus can now learn that. Now, I'll teach it to her before I for forget. But... Out from that machine contraption comes Irvin, Selfie, and Zell, who miraculously survived. They were in the machine, weren't they? No wonder it was easier. They pretty much disguised themselves <clears throat> in the machine so the Galbadian forces wouldn't know that they survived the blast. So, yeah. And everybody's excited to know that the garden is safe, no thanks to them, because after all, they forgot to kill that one guard who triggered the missiles. Well, I will give them the benefit of the doubt they did try to disable him, but it's always that one guy. I know that sounds so boring, but I just want to elaborate. It's, a, it's just a cliche that needed to stop. It's that one guy that always shows up to try to ruin the hero's plans. Well, I'll be right back. I have to uh, finish doing something first. I'll see you guys in a bit. And I am back. Now that we've left the area, we could just go sightseeing. Yeah, we have to in order to actually get the next cutscene rolling. But anyway, do you want to go upstairs and get a magazine? Well, get a Timber Maniacs magazine. Why did I pause from that? I really wonder why did I pause from that. But anyway, I'm just restocking items since I have more than enough money to do so. Hooray, shopping sprees are fun. This is ironically less than what I had in Sailor Moon Another Story. I swear to God, I was rocking about 100,000 yen by the time I was in the third chapter. Uh, nonetheless... Where I really want to go is over here. Oh, don't worry, I'll get that Timber Man Maniacs magazine. Apparently it's for a side quest. So, all you have to do is talk to Shopkeeper and Zell's, uh... No, I don't have the money for that. No, no, the parts for that, sorry, not the money, the parts. And Zell's Metal Knuckle and Gauntlet is on... Or Maverick and Gauntlet is on sale. Quistus, I don't have the weapons for that. I don't. Ha I already have Morningstar, and uh, no, I mean Rising Sun. Sorry, Morningstar. I still gotta get the pieces for with that too. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do a lot of drawing and grinding and stuff like that. Kinda makes me wish I had Diabolos so I could steal all that stuff. But stupid me had to forget about him. So now we're gonna go back to Renoa. No, no, turn around. Hey god, there's no random encounters here. So now we're gonna go back to Renoa. To continue the plot. After all, we did all the sightseeing we're going to see. There I sightsee. Now can we go on with the story? Of course we can. And of course, Renoa will once again toy with our emotions, because after all, Renoa, to me, seems rather forced by Square Enix, but at the same time, she has the, uh, the personality of a tease. How shall I put this? She may be the person that you're supposed to like, but at the same time, she teases you and flirt with you and just teases you some more. So, so I'm just gonna have to go full sooner and say it didn't mean anything. Yeah. That's right. I'm going full sooner. You're not gonna stop me. 
Ah, boy. She could see right through it. It's okay. Whatever. Ellipses. None of your business. Anyway, the fact that uh, Renault is the type of character that pretty much pokes fun at Squall's emotions Still, these two eventually end up together. Why? Because that's the couple that has the most focus. But she's still a tease. She really is. After all, she used to be Cypher's girl. Anyway, we could talk to Meridobi to continue the plot as well. Also to unlock something else. But for right now, say it, I want him to understand us. Because... Well, it just makes... uh the mayor of more understanding of our position. So, in other words, Squall is trying to tell the mayor what he wants to hear after the mayor just experienced getting his butt kicked by the gull body and soldiers. Now, with this out of the way, and the next cutscene coming up, that would mean the mayor would return back home, and afterwards, he will be available to play cards with. Now, <clears throat> the mayor is one of the hardest people to play cards against, next to Headmaster Sid, because Mayor uh, Dobe will be housing the Leviathan card. Yes, the great and powerful Leviathan. I'm gonna keep saying that because it's so hilarious. Wait, no, wait, sorry. He doesn't house Leviathan, he has Irvin. My bad. There was a house guess of his that houses Leviathan. So the house guess of his actually, ha I mean, has Leviathan in many, many rare cards. However, there should be no reason for me to come back here. But for the most part... Hmm, there's nothing here. Thought there was some sort of, uh... Draw point that would have appeared by now. But we've gotten all the draw points we need. That draw point of region, and the draw point of shell. Because that draw point of Ultima in... The mayor's house is a one-time only deal. Once you draw it, you're, it's gone for good. At least Squall has 13 Ultima to work with. Okay, let's get out of this screen here. Thank you. So I just remembered I'm supposed to talk to Irvin if I want to go back and play Triple Triad with the mayor. Wait, what are you doing, you idiot? Go back! Oh wait, the draw point's already been drawn. Where are you going? Oh, right! Right, I forgot! The Timber Maniacs magazine, almost forgot about that. I guess that's part of a side quest. <clears throat> but yes, we will have to come back here, because there'll be another... Timber Maniacs magazine, and not to mention, uh, that's part of a side quest for a different optional side quest. So now that we've got that out the way, now let's get the hell out of this place. Come on, let's get out. Don't just stand around there looking stupid, Squall. Let's get out of the place. Now then, if we've got what we need for now, we'll just say sayonara to this place. Because eventually we'll have to go back on the Balam Garden. Now then, let's go back to the ferry. Or the, not the ferry, I meant the lift. Well, technically the Balam Garden is a ferry since it's now stranded in water. Let's go up the elevator.
All right, now we gotta meet up with Irvin, and we're gonna continue more cutscenes. Hooray! All right. Since the headmaster gave them the okay to fix up the ship, we still have a series of cutscenes left before we actually continue on using the mobile fort, I mean the mobile uh, garden as a means of transportation. So, Irvin is curious about the technicians. Excuse me one second. Sorry about that, I accidentally spilled something and it got all over the floor. Anyway, we're still talking to Irvin, who's amazed that there are actually uh, technicians working on the garden. So, or more on the lines of, he's trying to, he wanted to ask the technicians to make some improvements on the garden. And Squall says, so long as it doesn't slow down any progress. Meanwhile, Squall Let's, uh, well, Squall is informed by Irvin, that's what I'm trying to say, that Selfie is pretty down and out in the dumps. So, he wants Squall to go cheer her up as she's in the quad. Well, we won't be going in the quad this part. Also, Irvin is really impressed about the technology that's being used to repair the garden. And of all the things he says, guns and women is his department. Ah, <sighs> Irvin, never change. Anyway, I'm going to be ending this part here. In the next part, we'll be meeting up with Selfie in part 40. This is RVMan985. See you guys next time.